Megan or Stitching May here to do my update video and I failed you. It's been almost a month since my last video update. Um, I have a good excuse. Um, it's not because I didn't want to do a video or didn't feel the need to do a video which is what it was before. This time I was having to kind of hide some stuff and I couldn't do a video. Um, so the last time I came to you guys was the week before we went on vacation to the beach and we went to the beach we had a blast my son's friend decided to come well we had talked to my co-worker who has a kid my son's age and their friends and they got to come down with us and surprise my son he had no clue we pretended that we were getting a pizza delivery and it was his friend oddly enough he did they had stopped for a pizza on the way in and had pizza so that made it even funnier but, um, <clears throat> and then when I came back, I started working on a secret stitch that I couldn't show anybody. So then I didn't have any progress because I didn't stitch it out on the beach. And then when I came back, I worked slowly on the secret stitch up until I finished it last week. And then, um, and then I was working some on my Connie G sow, which I am doing some model stitching. So at the time it was a little bit ahead and I couldn't show it. So anyway... A lot of stuff that I couldn't show you when I was stitching. But here I am now. I have two finishes. One I don't have with me. I'll have to show you pictures of that one. And then um, one I can show you is in hand. A new start. I worked on a lot of different whips. I have a little bit of haul and then a change to my possible change to my channel. It's a change to my rotation which then may help me do a change to my channel. We'll see. So first of all, I'll jump right in. The secret stitch that I was doing was a gift for Organic Granny. It was an Artiste Fox. Um, I don't have, it was a kit. I don't really, I'm gonna, I am got the pattern sending to a friend um, to where she can use her own DMC. I don't recommend the kit itself. If you get the pattern or you get the kit, um, I Go ahead and, and convert it. Go ahead and throw all the thread that comes with it out and just use some DMC that's similar. Um, I ran out of at least one if not two colors. There was one that was obvious. There was a color that was in there that wasn't even needed. I was not impressed with the kit but I absolutely love the pattern itself. And that was the fox and I will insert pictures of it finished and of Lori looking at it and getting or Lori looking at it Lori getting the gift and of course of gay she does exist trying to steal it here I don't know I'm gonna try new editing software so I may be able to overlap it if so it's gonna be kind of awkward but oh well <clears throat> but there is the fox and like I said that is a um Hobby Lobby frame that I got my husband actually picked it out and um, I laced it onto foam core poster board type stuff and then I um, stitch wizard or wizard stitch you know the little I think it's called wizardry tape or stitch wizard or stitch wiz or I don't know it's this little double sided tape that you put in between your fabric and your fabrics and you iron over it and I did that and I put some felt backing on it with a little burlap um, hook to clip onto the frame. So that's how I finished it. I felt like it looked shoddy. People said it looked great. I think we're a worse critic on ourselves than other people are. Um, so my next finish was my Blackboards, Blackboards, Blackbirds Designs Eleanor Rigby. And I finished this one at the retreat. <clears throat> Here is that piece oh and I did get my color in cotton I just realized I didn't bring it with me or not I've already mixed it into my to my floss but there my Eleanor Rigby is now this is done on that um, upholstery fabric from Hobby Lobby <clears throat> it measures out to 28 count when you stitch it out and it is um, a very light neutral color. If you hold, when I did Olivia and Elena's um, Christmas ornaments that you may have seen on Olivia's channel, 
Um, <clears throat> I did them both on this fabric. Pardon the throat clearing. It's allergy season for me. Um, I did them both on this fabric. And when I held them up next to each other, I realized that one was taller and one was wider. So as long as you don't do the same project side by side, there won't be any issue. I guess it's not technically, I mean, it's linen, but even linens are usually kind of even, if that makes sense. That's as clear as mud. Anyway, so if you hold, like if I stitch this again next to it, you may notice some difference, but looking at it on, you can't tell a difference. And for $16.99 a yard, full price, not counting a sale coupon or a sale price, it can't beat it. I'll use it for little projects like this. <clears throat> but there, Eleanor Rigby is. I can find, every time I worked on this, I sang this song. And poor Connie, every time she was here and I was working on it, she had to suffer me singing the song and getting it stuck in my head. And then she got it stuck in her head. So, after I finished that one on the retreat, I decided I needed a new start. And that's how this all starts. At that point, after I finished that, um, Jen's stitching niche and her sister, who I believe is, I think it's her sister, is now doing videos on floss tube. Her, she's under Clarkie Stitcher, Clarkie Crafter. I'll put a link to her video below. And I think it's her other sister, Bridget. So Jim, Bridget, and Sharon, I think. <clears throat> I think they're all sisters. They were sitting at the table behind us and they do this really cool thing at retreats where they literally set a timer, they work on it, they have their projects, and they cycle through their projects every hour. Not through all their projects. That would be ridiculous. They choose a new project in their group every hour so they change projects every hour and I was like that's amazing you guys are getting so much done on different projects once I finish this I will join with you so my first one with them was my new start <clears throat> and that is a gift from Lori organic granny it is called M it's by M designs it is called dragonflies ladybird ladybugs and bees oh my chart 035 and you're probably not going to see that very well because this is the official kodak paper um so you're probably getting a really black bad glare but it's like a mandala <clears throat> and it's got butterflies it's got dragonflies and it says dragonflies ladybugs and bees oh my over and over again on it and it's beautiful so i decided to start this I used the DMC conversion and then on, um, they needed an Auver, a sweat, so, uh, yeah, not gonna even go there. Some fancy floss that I didn't have and I just used, it says it's brown and it said that it's DMC alternate was 223, which is pink. So, Gay and I sat down for a very long time. Gay did all the work. I did she did it all and she picked out 890 we picked out 898 <clears throat> and then um for the brown and then Lori and I went out to the wonderful mobile floss truck that Katrina brings to all of her retreats it was a Katrina retreat and <clears throat> Katrina showed us we were looking at so many colors and we had one picked out and then Katrina said what about this one and this, I forgot my white background, guys. I'm horrible. This is what I chose. I'll do better with my white background. And I can't start over. I've got to go get my son and my niece from school soon. It is Week Style Works Madres 2126. It's um, variegated with light pink, light green, and some purple. It's so pretty. And it just worked well with these other colors. I don't have the, all of the colors in here. But it worked well with all of the colors, the DMC colors. It was just so pretty. And the lovely Leslie was there. So I purchased some fabric, you know, under the sea fabrics by Leslie. I purchased this 32 count opal buttercup. And I'm not one to stitch on opal linens. 
my friend Kelly was there and she's like, oh my gosh, you're using an opal? But there that is, guys. This is such a warm and buttery. Buttercup is amazing. Butterscotch, too, would work with it. It's just a beautiful color. And it's got just a hint of opal in it. This doesn't have any metallics or beads, so I was, I was happy with that. And I thought that this color looked yummy. The funny thing is, is that the first time I saw this pattern, I liked the buttercup, but it was a plain linen. And then when I got up there, it I don't think it was there anymore or I couldn't see. It. And I was disappointed when we found that one. And Lori picked it up. She's like, what about this? I was like, oh my gosh, I had picked up that one earlier, but it wasn't opal. So there that star is. <clears throat> so after I worked out in an hour, for an hour, I then had to follow the rules, Jen's rules, and stitch on another project. I had to get this, put this back up. Like I said, um, I'm going to get my son in just a bit, and then my niece is coming to, um, biologically a cousin. And the heart, it's, he's my brother. Her dad's my brother rather than a cousin. So, she's my niece and he's my brother. Um, he grew up with us. He lived with us growing up. So, um, her parents are got some stuff going on today. So, I'm getting them both. So, I have to make sure there's not a huge mess. Before they get here. Otherwise, it gets bigger. So, then my next project was curly locks. And I think I have a picture of that. And if I do, I'll insert it in here from before I st where I started. And this is where I am now. This is just on a piece of 18 count Ada. Just plain old Ada. And then I had to stop. Hey, look, it doesn't have a needle attached this time. Because I got to a point that I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I know that I worked on her and her clothes, and that was pretty much it. I had some frogging to do on this one. I don't think I worked any on the... Yep, that's all I worked on was her and her clothes. And then, um, I got to a spot where I don't know what to do, um, <clears throat> on her overalls. Oh, wait, that would help. This is what she'll look like when she's finished. I don't mind this one's a she, but it's a she. Um, and she's got overalls on her on and on her overall she has initials and I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to put my initials on. So about the time that I was sitting there thinking I wonder if I should change these. I had gotten up a few times because there's not a lot of stitching at retreats. There's a lot especially we the retreat was amazing. Um there were so many people there. People I knew, some people I didn't know. I've never met Jen Stitching Knit. When I saw her, I was like, I know I know you. And let me just say, she and Kitten Stitcher look a lot alike. Um, that's who I thought it was at first. But I was like, no, your hair's too long. That's not... And I just stared at her. And I was like, I know I know you. And then she told me where I knew her from. There were some that didn't do floss you, but had watched floss you. So we knew them from commenting. Of course, there are people on Instagram and Facebook. We had an absolute blast. There were, oh gosh, around 50 of us. We were in two different stitching rooms. Um, we went up, we got there on Friday afternoon and we left on Sunday. My fault. That's a whole other big confusing story that I won't get into. But um, <clears throat> we um, had a blast. I drove down. Got further on the interstate than I've ever driven, like over the Atlanta six lane traffic. As we get on the track on that road, I tell the girls in the car, and they, by the way, I've never driven on an interstate this big. They both just shut up and didn't say anything else. I did well. Um, only one scary moment in the parking lot, and then, um, so there was a lot of running back and forth between the two rooms, like to see each other because Dina and Karen and, um, Donna and Shelly and Susan, people, some of the people I knew were over the other room. And there were some people in the room I knew. So we were just running back and forth to talk to everybody. And then I'm also a little up and down anyway. 
ask Lori, ask Connie, ask Kelly. They can, and Gay, they can tell you how about end, end down my end when I stitch. But anyway, so I probably got more like 30 minutes in. That was a really long story to tell you that I only stitched for like 30 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> and then when I came home, that was it. I came home and I decided to work on my Christmas Eve piece that night. I do not think I have a before picture of that. And I didn't get enough progress to really show anything. Because I was kind of winding down from the retreat. You know, the retreat crash. And then also, I was spending time with my husband. We started watching a new show called Westworld. That kind of absorbed my brain power. But... This is where I am on this piece. So my friends in my lunch brunch trio have finished this piece. So now it's just me working on it and I don't have to wait for them to work on it anymore. Again, this is my Fabrics by LJ. I don't remember the color. I think it was cobalt blue or dusty blue. It is a 32 count, I want to say Monaco or Lugana. No, it's not Jobelin because I don't like Jobelin because Jobelin moves too much. So, I know it's an even weave. It's not a linen and it's 32 count. <clears throat> I want to say it's Lugana, Luguana, whatever, however you say that. Lugana. And there's where I currently am. All that I got in was I stitched some of the word peace and then filled in some of the snow. My goal for my next, like, whatever, is to finish off the snow and the words, and then I'll kind of move up from there. I pretty much have this half finished, except for some snow flakes here and there. But there this one is. <coughs> this is on the, re Oops. the reprinted paper prairie schooler chart. Yes, I'm working on the original, and it's hurting my heart breaks my heart. I think I'm going to stitch. Oh, I can't tell you that because I'm going to another retreat. Never mind. But there, that's what it will look like when it's finished. Again, this is what it looks like now. I, um, it's DMC is called for, except that I changed these colors of these words. It called for like a peach, a beige, and a gray. And I didn't think it showed up very well in the fabric, so I went with a green, gold, and red that was already in the pattern. So, it still is called for. It's just the ones that are in there. <clears throat> this is my Diana bag. The other one was in my Mommelly bag. That was a gift. A stitching May bag. And then the next project I worked on was my Connie G. Sal. And now I can show it to you because I'm behind. So all that I have finished is up until the August block. So I can show you that. This is another Mommelie bag. One of the first. This is some of the first edition Mommelie bags. So this one will be worth a lot of money one day because it's a first edition. Um, <clears throat> so I can show you my entire project right now because I'm not ahead. I haven't started September's yet. This is just through August. Guys... I can't speak enough about this project. This project is so much fun to work on. This is my to-go project because it's all in one color. So it's easy for me to pick up and just stitch on. I take it to work on the off chance that I have downtime or that I have time on my lunch break to stitch. And this is what I work on. This is Sunny Dye's fabric. She no longer makes this color. I checked with her. So I don't know the name of it. <clears throat> but she no longer sells it. And it's DMC one strand and it's stitched over two. Technically over two, but with the split stitch and stuff, sometimes it feels like it's stitched over one. So my favorite block so far would have to be either August's, which is this one here, or December, January, February, March, April, May, June, or June's. The hardest block was probably this one right here and it's not that it was difficult i mean it's not crazy hard it was just kind of hard the stitching was easy the plan of attack was a little difficult but there that is and again this is a free sale on her website connie g's um stitching i think <clears throat> she also has etsy but i love this it's she doesn't call it black work because it's not the technical black work stitches but it kind of looks like black work
And then the next day, oh, before I had left, I had worked on Anne of Green Gables with Connie because that's our stitch along that we're doing together. And I don't know if I have a picture of that before or not. Um, <clears throat> but here is, here, this is where I currently am. And this is just done, I think, on just a regular 14 count Ada that was gifted to me by Connie. My needle worker, my needle worker, my needle minder here is Anne, of, Anne from the PBS Anna Green Gables. And then there's this one that Connie gave me and it says, isn't it nice that isn't it nice to think that tomorrow is a new day with no mistakes in it yet? <clears throat> um, I had finished Anne out and I had most of the flowers done and then I backstitched Anne. So that's all that I did was the backstitching on Anne. And then next I'm going to move on to Diana, her bosom friend or her kindred spirit. And then I'll move on to the border patterns. We have already watched all of the new season. <clears throat> so we are going to watch Floss Chew or listen to the audiobook while we stitch together. It's a little easier to watch Floss Chew. Oh, that was another Mommelie bag. Mommelie did not sponsor this video though. <laughs> okay, and then next was my Dark 13 stitching. And I chose to work on Earthly Treasures by Pumpkin, or Plum, Pumpkin, what in the world? Plum Street Samplers. It's the one that's got the little tombstone angel that says, Dwell not on earthly treasures, nor covet or envy or pout. Thou entered this world and brought nothing in, and will carry with thee nothing out. So I started working on that. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of what that looked like before here. <clears throat> and then this is where I am. This is on some 25 count. This is 20, no. Yes, 25 count R and R Productions. I think it's um. Oh, what is the name of this one? Vintage. Vintage homespun, homespun classics, something like that. It is in the called for colors. This was gifted to me by Melody Stitches for my birthday. The fab, the not the fabric, the pattern and the floss. I absolutely love this fabric and cannot find it anywhere else. And um, as you saw, I had finished part of the part of the word wording. I just finished out some more of the wording. And I actually got a little motif, a little bitty motif. But that was it for my dark 13 stitching. And then on to the changes to my rotation. So, guys, I wasn't getting a lot of stitching done at all. Um, because I didn't know what I wanted to stitch on. And then I would choose one and I'd make myself work on it. And then I wouldn't want to stitch on it. And I would just not stitch at all. And it was ruining my stitchy bug. And so I finally decided after I had been seeing all of the arbitrary... August and the little spinners where people were just randomly spinning or randomly choosing their whips every day through the spinner and after having the fun with the Jen stitching niche and realizing how much fun it was to change projects every hour <clears throat> I've decided I'm not going to change project projects every hour but I'm going to use the wheel and I think I'm going to try to do it for the rest of 2018 and see how that goes. So every day I will spin the wheel, choose a project, and then go from there. If this works, the only exceptions are if I have a new start or a sal or one that's about to be finished because I don't want to put it away. Like if it's got like a neck, like one more day of stitching would finish it, I'll probably stick with it then. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to try to spin every day and choose which project I'm going to work on through the spinner. Um, I have a total of 19 projects, including the Connie G cell. I'm not going to include that one on the wheel because I won't be able to show you guys progress, first of all. And second of all, um, I won't, I use that as my to-go piece, so I don't want to, like, end up having it for 
for three days or something. So, the way this is going to possibly change my channel is I started thinking when I don't come to you guys with videos, it's cause, because I don't feel like I've had enough progress and that kind of thing. Oh my gosh, I could, no, I didn't forget. I was, thought I forgot my hole. Wow. See? Squirrel bouncing around. I feel like I don't have enough progress for you guys, so I don't come to you guys with videos because I don't feel like I have enough to show you. Now, I'm thinking that if I'm changing products, projects every day, I might have enough to show you guys or feel like I have enough to show you guys. So this may mean that I come to you guys definitely every two weeks like I wanted to, but possibly, possibly, maybe even weekly because I will have a week's worth of stitching done. We'll see. We'll see how the stitchy bug goes. We'll see how this rotation continues. I'm not going to say it's a definite change because if I say it's a definite change, then I'm going to feel pressure and then I'm just going to not do anything at all. But we'll see. I'm hoping that it means that I can do more frequent videos and have more to show you guys. So my first spin was last night and it shows the old mill. I'm calling it the old mill. It's more of a water wheel, I think. I don't know. What does this call it? Does it call it anything? I'm going to call it the old mill because <clears throat> that's what it was. It was a corn mill or flour mill or something. But that's what it will look like when it was finished. This is what it looked like before because I did take a picture of it. And this is where I got to. Not a lot more done. Just filling in the filling in this wall right here. So this is not one that I usually enjoy stitching right now. Um, just because of all the color changes. But I really, really enjoyed it last night. Like it was hard for me to put it down. Um, what, it was hard to get started. But once I found where I was and that kind of thing. It was hard for me to put it down. But there that is. So I had a lot of whip progress this month. Not actual progress, but I worked on a lot of different whips this month. So I'm really liking the change the projects thing. We'll see how it goes. It could I could completely crash and burn. I may not make it throughout 2018. I know that's very lofty, but I'm not me if I don't make crazy lofty goals. But um, we'll see how that works and see how that helps. So, so my camera cut off on the haul. So, Dina and I had both had a chart that we weren't really, really, really into anymore. So, we traded them. I saw her. I was like, hey, would you want this pattern? And she's like, I do, but would you want this one? So, we did a stash swap. And I got the Stony Creek Christmas Sentiments. Guys, I love everything about this pattern. I love the trees. I love the cardinals. I love the poinsettia or poinsettia. This is one that's probably not just going to get stashed. This is probably one that's going to get started soon. There that is. And then my dad sent me a message that they had stopped by a yard sale and found a box of patterns or a bag of patterns and they bought them for me. So this is one that was in there. This is Queen Street Alley. No clue. There was a whole bag of patterns. Some of them were duplicates. Some of them were illegal copies. I've kind of sifted through what can be kept and what can't be kept legally. <laughs> but there that one is. There was also this cross stitch for the love of cross stitch magazine. And then it needs to be tossed. It needs to be tossed. There was a waist canvas that you stitch on your sweaters, which I won't stitch on a sweater, but I did think that this pattern right here was very pretty. This little wicker heart <clears throat> and the butterfly on it. I like that a lot. And then I thought these little birds were cute too. I think I've seen somebody stitch those birds. And then this one, this is an old fashioned feeling. It's got a dragonfly guys, a dragonfly. That was worth the whole bag. And then the one that my dad was like, you know, if you wanted to stitch that one, I'd hang it up in my house. It's a Leisure Arts Portrait of Santa. This is beautiful, but it's so in-depth. Oh, it would take forever to stitch. And then I got two more threads from the Katrina cart, the Katrina van. 
Got this one. This one's called Blue Vescue. I don't want anything white to show it to you. Um, oh wait, I got a piece of paper here. That's kind of white piece of paper. And then one so happily knit. That one's a week's dye works. And this one's a sampler general art collection dragonfly. I could not have that one. Lori saw it and was like, because we were looking for the other piece and she knew it didn't match and was afraid that I would want to change the whole piece based on it. So she wasn't going to show it to me. But then I saw the name of it and had to get it. And then from Leslie, I got two pieces of fabric. This is Anibus 28 count on linen. It's a fat quarter. I'm learning guys, trying to learn. This is probably going to come up more brown than it really is. It's got a beautiful gold and brown and gray and green tint to it. Oh, it's amazing. This is an Emily fat fabric if it was 32 count. I even took a picture and messaged it to her. I was like, look at this fabric. But it's so, I have no clue what this is going to go on, but I got it. And then this is NYX or NYX again. It's a 28 count fat quarter. And it's got blues and grays. And I think there's a Blackbird um, Designs Patriotic piece that Connie and I are going to do together. And I'm going to use this piece. I looked at this for um, my Fairy Moon. And I'm still considering this for Fairy Moon. 